when did sports go from a simple way to have fun and get some exercise to a social convention? The Veracos Open by Irma Bombeck. Read by Carl Wallace. Well, if I'd known the battle of the sexes was going to be fought in a tennis court, I wouldn't have let my knees grow together. Looking back, it all started when Bobby Riggs became queen of the courts, Grass, Clay, and Margaret. Businessmen, housewives, students, blue collar workers, politicians, preschoolers, everyone was into tennis. Heaven help you if you were new to the game. It was an uphill battle to break through the barriers of snobbery and elitism to play a game that for years had been dominated by rich kids with weak chins and straight white teeth. That sounds biased. Would you ever see a picture of a Rockefeller coming out of a bowling alley with his gym bag? Or Kennedy t tinkering with his engine just before the stock car race? On the coldest day in the Midwest, you can always pick up a newspaper and see one of them with a white sweater knotted around his neck, shielding his eyes from the blazing sun. As a nouveau tennis player, I felt like Bill Watley, the madam in Gone with the Wind who tried to buy respectability by giving money to a hospital. The question was, could a woman played by varicose veins find happiness with a tennis player who was attached to his mother by an umbilical sweatband? My first day out was a disaster. I can't remember the first fellow at tennis who appraised me coolly. Why this tacky, she sniffed. Everyone but anyone who plays tennis these days dresses in colors. Tell me, who's your pro? I began a little help with my strokes from Leroy Ace. She frowned. I don't believe I've heard of him. What club? The boys club, but he moonlights from his garage. How well do you play? She asked before going to the other side of the net. I, te I had tennis elbow twice last week. That only means something's wrong with your stroke. You need help. Do you prefer string or gut? I play with anybody, I shrugged. Would you, would you like to warm up? Sure. I popped the ball over the fence. Would we have only been playing for two days? That long, she said sadly. What about you, I asked. I played on the good old days, she said slowly, before they opened up the courts to Democrats. I don't care what she said. I knew that somehow, in this lumpy little body that tripped over woods on the carpet, was a Chrissy Everett just fighting to get out. It was just a matter of time before I developed a form, learned how to get my racket out of the press, and didn't require oxygen to read serve. But first, I knew I would never be taken seriously as a tennis player until I learned how to pick up the ball. I summoned my son. Now there are a few things in this world more satisfying than having your son teach you how to play tennis. One is having a semi-truck run over your foot. So it was as if she was paying you back for letting him fall off the dryer when he was a baby, for putting him to bed on his fifth birthday when he threw ice cream into the fan, for bailing out of the car when you were teaching him to how to drive. All the stories come out the moment you walk onto the court together. Okay, we're going to continue today with our instructions on how to pick up the ball. I know how to pick up the ball, I said. I've told you before. We do not pick up the ball like a gorilla going, going for a banana. There was such a way and there were several approaches. You can learn with a western forehand grip. Lead over gently and have the ball with your racket until it bounces. Several minutes later, as I was on my knees, pounding the rocket into the yellow optic, he leaned over and said, It is not a snake you're beating to death. It's a tennis ball. Let's try the ball against the foot method. I stood up, exhausted. How does that work again? You grip your racket against the ball, and three forces the inside of your left foot. Bending your knee, you lift the ball to go about six inches off the ground and drop it. When it bounces, you continue bouncing it with your racket until you can pluck it off the ground into your hand. Gripping the racket, I forced the ball to eat on my foot and roll it over the foot and toward the net. I cornered it, started inching the ball up my leg, but lost my balance and fell into the net. Approaching the ball once more, I accidentally kicked it with my foot, and in our couch position, I chased it to the corner of the court, slowing my body into the fence. For the next 15 minutes, the elusive little ball moved all over the court like I had a motor in it. Finally, I leaned over, grabbed it with my hand, pushed it on my leg, and supported it with a racket. Okay, I shouted, I picked up the ball. It'll be all for today, he said. We'll spend a few more weeks on this before moving along to actually hitting the ball. I put my hand, arm over his shoulder. Now, let me tell you how to pick the towels off the bathroom floor. You bend your body in the middle, grab the towel firmly between 
he was gone. Rotten kids, they shouldn't be allowed on the courts. Got a story about those kids who play tennis anyway. You know the one. These tiny little kids who sit around swanky tennis courts in a pair of dollar ninety-eight tennis shoes with the strings knotted, holding a tennis racket made in Tijuana and sucking on an ice cube. When they're invited to play, they squint and ask, What do you call this thing again? The adults are amused. A tennis racket. Then the kid really starts to perform. He giggles as his pudgy little hands cannot hold two tennis balls at the same time, so he places one on, on the baseline. Has to be told where to stand, it's more somewhere between art a buckled and a bullfighter with bad eyes. After the warm up, the personality of the kid changes. He scoops up the ball with the back of his foot, aces have put in on every serve, races around the court like a wooden nymph, jumps the net to offer his condolences, and asks for a towel. My theories are beings from another planet who aren't children of all. Their 49 year old tennis players have the body of a six million dollar man. They get on my nerves almost as much as Debbie Dominant. Debbie has always been a pace setter. She was the first one around the block with wheels on her garbage can and shooting her son Isis three years before Marlo Thomas. Two years before Dennis, tennis became in, Debbie appeared at the supermarket flushed from Brussels in a tennis jacket up to her tan line a white tennis shoes with a little ball fringe over the heel. Isn't this terrible, she said, pushing her white hat back in her head. I was in set point before I knew it. The dinner was a, was upon me and I just buzzed in here before I could change. I know I didn't meet anyone I knew. I'm simply mortified. If she was waiting to dive and running a power mower, she couldn't have been less obvious. Within weeks, every housewife in the neighborhood was in tennis dress not only while pushing her shopping cart around, but wearing it everywhere. At school one afternoon, I passed a housewife on the hall who was heading for the office in full tennis attire. Excuse me, I said, but the girl's restroom was out of paper towels. Why tell me, she asked nervously, fingering her, her sweatband. You had head on your t-shirt, and I figured you were a restroom attendant. You're obviously not into tennis, she said stiffly. That was the day I succumbed. I've been into tennis now for six months and was named Miss Con Congeniality in the Veracose Open. Though my form still needs work, the body, not the game. I'm glad to report I've made progress. To begin with, I finally mastered what to do with the second tennis ball. Having small hands, I was becoming terribly subconscious about keeping it on a can on the car while I served the first one. I noticed a woman tucked the second ball just inside the elastic leg of their tennis panties. I tried, but found the space already occupied by a leg. Now I say we've got the second ball down my cleavage. Give me a chest it off and stuns my opponent throughout an entire set. Next I learned how to stall, though stalling my opponent's entire game off. It's called the old tie the shoe trick. When your opponent is ready to serve, simply drop to your knees, untie your shoe, rearrange his tongue, and then tie it again. Baseball players use the old stall all the time. Recently, Pat Zachary swallowed his chewing tobacco and threw up against a, a dugout wall. I haven't mastered what hour I can throw up yet. Sometimes it's during a return. Another play is the rearranged the string number. Never take the rap for a bad return or no return. Whenever you hit a ball into a net or miss it entirely, bring the game to a grinding halt by checking the strings of a racket, spending sometimes as much as five minutes spreading them and testing their strength. This is always you have any responsibility for a bad shot. Forget all you've been told about concentration. It's overrated. Often, when there's time during one of my lobs, I yell across the net, Your zipper is open. I've not only been ignored, but soundly punished for my good deed. Probably the greatest accomplishment this year has been my skill at running how to run around my about backhand. Early in my tennis career, you just think when the ball landed to the left of me, I had to use my backhand to return it. I insist more than anything is better including straddling a 15-foot cyclone fence. No doubt about it, every day in every way my game grows stronger. I saw one enthusiast the other day playing with his racket out of the press. I'll have to try that. The End